The setup for this tutorial is very simple. It's just a black document, 800 by 600, for both the windows that I've created, which is a simple random selection active in the middle of the canvas. But if you take a look closely to the bar on top here, you will see that the document untitled one is RGB slash 8. That 8 means 8 bit. Whereas the second one is actually RGB 32 bit. I want to demonstrate how different they are when we are to pick colors. Now I'm in the 8 bit document and I'm going to click on the foreground color as I normally do in order to pick a color from RGB color picker. There you go. This is the standard color picker which allows me in this portion of the screen to key in the value for R, G, and B. And as you know, white corresponds to 255, 255, and 255 for R, G, and B. Now, since I want it to be a little bit orangish, I'm going to decrease the value for G and decrease it even further for B. And then I'm going to press Enter. This is a little bit more towards orange, as you can see from the color picker here. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to use the shortcut key alternate backspace in order to use the color that I just picked to fill this selection. Then I'm going to click on select and deselect and apply the new filter blur tilt shift. As you can see, uh, even if I increase the blurriness, I can only slightly perceive the orange tint that I've slightly added to the RGB mixture of this white. Whereas when I work on 32-bit, the story is completely different. Because when I click on the foreground color this time, the color picker that comes up is rather different. You see, my 255, 250, 240 selection is still active here, but you notice that this time now I have another additional slider which represent the intensity of the color. So for the time being I will just ignore the normal relation that we have with RGB when we are working in 8-bit and I will just pick whatever orange I think I like the most. Let's say this one for example. As you can see in the standard RGB it corresponds to 255 48 0 very different compared to 255, 250, 240 that I've chosen before. And the equivalent RGB is this orange shown on top here. But look what I'm going to do now. I'm going to increase the intensity. As I increase the intensity, you will notice that the RGB value for 8-bit remain unchanged at the bottom part. It's still 255, 0, whereas the 32-bit value for RGB is very different. It's now 2024. 20, what does it mean? Actually, when we work with 32-bit RGB, the highest value is 1. So if I'm typing here 1, it corresponds to 255 in the 8-bit RGB section. Just to cut the long story short, 111 in RGB 32, it's equal to 255, 255, 255 in the 8-bit. Now, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to change arbitrary the value for R to something higher than that. Let's say, for example, 8. I'm going to change the value for G, let's say, to something like uh, 3 or 4, or something that goes in the same relation that we had before with 255R, 250G, 240B, where R has the highest value and B has the lowest value whereas G is in between the two values. So I can say 8, 3, 1, or I can say 6, 4, 1, or anything with similar relation. For the time being, I'm happy with 8, 3, and 1. And you see that on top here, in the RGB 32-bit, it corresponds just to pure white. I'm going to press OK, and I'm going to do the same thing. Shortcut, alternate, or option, uh, backspace, to fill the selection. Nothing changed if we compare it to the RGB 8-bit document that I've created before. It's just a white filled selection within a black canvas. But look what happened now when I deselect and I move on to filter, tilt shift. Here you go. Now you can see that the edges of the selection 
has taken that little orange that it was in the relation between the value 8, 3 and 1 and when I blur the actual white it reveals the orange flavor that I attribute to that color. Now if I increase the blurriness you will see that that will be also more evident. I can rotate and change the shape and the size of my tilt uh, shift in order to get more creative result. I can also use the new slider in the middle of the tilt shift uh, creator to increase or decrease the blurring. If I want to get even more creative I can turn on also the iris blurriness in the right hand panel here and move these around or just change the shape from a circle to a square or just stretch it like an ellipse. I can just click right in the middle of this selector and move it somewhere else to create more original results. When I click on OK on the top part of the screen, the blurriness will be rendered in our document. So this was the result with 8-bit, this is the result with 32-bit.